Now, I mentioned earlier that exceptions don't just simply come from .NET. You can create your own custom exceptions, and in this movie, we're going to see how to do that. Essentially, by subclassing the exception object from the system namespace, you can create your own exceptions. And then when you're ready to raise an exception, you use the throw instruction. So for example, you can do things like throw a new system exception, or you can throw a new my custom exception. You have to have the new in there because you've got to create the exception object that you're going to throw. And then the throw keyword will cause the exception to be thrown and then the catch mechanism will go into effect. So let's go over to some live code to see how we define our own exceptions and then throw and catch them. So I have my custom exceptions example here, and here's my snippets. I've scrolled down to the creating exceptions section. What I'm going to do first is just scroll down here, and I'm going to copy some of the setup code. Copy this. I'm going to paste this in my program, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to ignore the catch section for a moment. It's going to get the finally section. Put that in here. Now, one of the first things you realize is that you don't actually need to have a catch section at all. You can just have try and finally if you want to. So what I've got here is some code. I've got a string variable called the name. And then in my try block, I've got a function called get name. Well, actually, I haven't defined it yet. That's why you see that little bit of squiggle there. But the get name function is going to ask the user to input a name and it's going to return it in the form of a string. And then I've got code on line 17, which simply writes out hello and then whatever the name that you put in. And then in the finally block, which remember always runs, we have a string that says have a nice day. So let's go back to the snippets and get that get name function. And what I'm going to do is get this right here, copy that. And I'm going to paste that function in right up here. And for the moment, I'm going to just take this part out of it. So what we're going to do in get name is use the console.readline function to read a string. And then we're going to return that string. So let's go ahead and run the code that we have and see how well it works. So I'm going to just build that ran. So now it's waiting for me to enter a name. And I'm just going to type in the name Scott. Says, hello, Scott. Have a nice day. Great. Okay. Everything's working fine. Let's suppose we wanted to catch a certain name, though, and have that cause an exception. So let's go back to the get name function. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what? If the string that was entered equals Joe, we're not going to allow the word Joe to be put in. So we're going to throw an exception called the no Joe's exception. Now we have to define the no Joe's exception, which you see right here on line 14. So let's go back to the snippets and scroll up. Here we have our definition for the no Joe's exception. Let's copy that and we'll paste it in. And it's a class. So I'm going to paste it outside my program class. So you can see on line eight, I've got a definition here for public class no Joe's exception. And there's the colon, which means it inherits from the exception class, which is contained in the system namespace. And remember, since I'm using the system namespace up here, I don't have to write out system.exception. I can just use the word exception here. So inside my no Joe's exception, I've got my constructor, and my constructor is a public no Joe's exception constructor. And what I'm doing here is I'm calling the base exception constructor with a string. So before I go any further, let's just jump back over to the MSDN documentation to see what the system exception looks like. So here we are in the documentation for the exception class. Let's scroll down. And you can see that there are four different ways I can construct an exception class. There's a constructor that takes no arguments. There's a constructor that takes an argument that's a string. And it says here, initializes a new instance of the exception class with a specified error message. Well, that sounds pretty much like the one I want. Well, let's just make sure. The next one is exception with serialization and info and streaming context. Well, whatever that is, okay, that's obviously wrong. And then there's the exception here with a specified error message and a reference to the inner exception. Okay, that's pretty advanced. I'm not going to use that one. Looks like number two is the one I want. So I have to initialize a new instance of the exception class with a specified error message. Okay, that sounds great. Let's go back to the code. Well, the way that I do that in C sharp, well, there's a couple ways I can do it. First, I'm just going to call the base level constructor with the string here. Now you might be wondering why am I not just simply inside my constructor doing something like this? This dot message equals no 
Joe's allowed. I'm going to save that and I'm going to build. Oh, wait, got an error. It says property or indexer system exception message cannot be assigned to. It is read only. Oh, so I can't actually make an assignment to that. Looks like the only way to do it in this case is through the constructor. Okay, well, I guess I won't do that then. So it looks like this base method is the only way to do that. So I'm passing in an error message to initialize the exception with we don't allow no Joes in here. However, I can give the user some help. And there's a field or a property in this case called help link. Again, let's just jump over to the documentation really quick. So if we scroll down, you'll see there's a property called help link and it says gets or sets a link to the help file associated with this exception. Oh, cool. Okay, so I can tell the user what to do in case an exception like this happens. Let's go back to the code. So what I'm going to do is initialize my help link here on line 13 to be a link to my website. So back down here in the program, let me close this error window so we have more space. You can see that when we get the input from the user, we're going to see if the string is equal to Joe. And if it is, we're going to throw the no Joe's exception. Now there's one more thing we have to do. We have to implement the catch block for the no Joe's exception. So let's go back to the code. And down here in the snippets, we've got my catch handler. I'll copy that. Go back over here and in between the try and the finally, I'm going to paste that in. So you can see here what I'm doing is I'm going to catch specifically a no Joe's exception and I have named the variable NJE. So what I'm going to do is write out the message, which is what I initialized it with up in the constructor. And then another line I'm going to write out for help visit. And then I'm going to write out the help link field that's in my no Joe's exception. All right. Looks like everything's ready to go. Let's hit F6. Okay. The build succeeded. Let's hit F5 to run it. All right. So I'm going to type in Scott. Hello, Scott. Have a nice day. That seems to work. Okay. Let's try it one more time with Joe. Oh, now we get an error. It says we don't allow no Joe's in here for help visit. And then here's the help link that I put into my help message for the user. And of course, in the finally block, it says, have a nice day. All right. So this is how you can create your own exceptions, throw your own exceptions, and use some of the fields provided by the base system exception object to give your users some help and some detailed messages for when those errors occur.